Is this the face of a child or a woman posing as a child? Hello everyone, namaste, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, this is Amisha Singh Chauhan. And if you're looking for something fun, dark and mysterious, then you're at the right place. So do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell icon so that every time I'm here with a new case to talk about, you'll get to know about it. So today the woman, no, the girl, the woman, the person's case we're going to talk about is very peculiar. So it has all the elements to be a blockbuster horror movie, you know, an unsuspecting Christian couple who has achieved the American dream and are privileged. They have a beautiful family. So they go outside to adopt a little six-year-old adorable girl only to find out that she is an adult sociopath who's masquerading around as a child and who intends to murder the entire family. Basically, I just relayed out a script of a movie that was actually made in 2009 and I'm talking about the movie Orphan. If you haven't seen that movie, I highly recommend you guys to watch it. It's amazing. Now, you must be thinking, if you haven't heard about this case, if you haven't heard about Natalia Grace, you might be thinking, why am I even mentioning and talking and blabbling about a Hollywood movie named Orphan? The reason is because the movie Orphan and the case we're going to talk about today has a lot of similarities, a lot of eerie similarities and quite frightening too, you know. So without any further ado, without talking about any Hollywood movie, let's just dive into the case of Natalia Grace. Now what happened is that in 2010, a family, the Barnets, they received a phone call from an adoption agency in Florida. Now the Barnets, Michael Barnett and his then wife, Christine Barnett, when they received this cold phone call, they were not really expecting what was coming in their lives. So they were planning to adopt a girl for a quite a long time, but unfortunately for some reasons, they were not able to do so. Now this adoption agency from Florida contacted them and told them that there is this girl from Ukraine who is seven to eight years old and she is up for adoption and they have researched the Barnett's family and they believe that this girl named Natalia Grace would be a perfect addition in their family. Now the thing is that this adoption was a closed adoption so they did not provide them with a lot of documents they only gave them limited which included a Ukrainian birth certificate. Now according to this birth certificate Natalia Grace the girl up for adoption her birth date was 4th of September 2003. So that would make her 7 to 8 years old at the time of adoption back in 2010. Now they also provided this information that Natalia had a very rare condition of dwarfism known as spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia. I literally said that in my breath. I'm quite proud of it. Anyways, uh, so she had this rare condition which basically affects bones of one's spine which can cause difficulty in breathing and mobility issues as well. Over that, she also had scoliosis. So they straight ahead told the medical condition that Natalia had and the Barnets were quite okay with it. Now, apart from all of this information, the agency also gave them an ultimatum. They told them that the Barnets only had 24 hours to decide whether or not they wanted to adopt Natalia Grace. And if they chose not to do so, then she would be sent to a foster house. Now, this is something weird. I mean, I don't know much about the rules and regulation, the entire procedure of adoption in the States. But from my research, I got to know that this was a very strange occurrence because uh, usually someone from the agency, the staff would go and do inspections and would interact with the parents. It's a long procedure. But over here, the entire process of adoption of Natalia Grace just happened within 24 hours. Um, you know, back then, I should have noticed that something was, was unusual with this. Uh, but we were in the process of adopting a daughter and bringing a, a new person into our home. And some of those things that should have stood out to me, uh, I really didn't recognize. So anyways, uh, the Barnets, Michael and Christine Barnets, they decided to go ahead and adopt Natalia Grace. Now, the thing is that from the very beginning, something was just not right with Natalia Grace. I mean, they were suspecting whether or not, if or not, she was really a seven or eight year old girl. Now, they remember that the first night they took her home, Christine was actually giving her a bath. And that is when she noticed that she had completely developed pubic hair. Now, in coming months, she would also notice that there were bloody rags around the house and there were no other females in the house other than Natalia and Christine herself. She had three boys and this insinuated that 
Natalia was actually menstruating and for some reason she was hiding this fact from everyone. Now, previously we have spoken about Lena Medina who if you don't know and if you haven't checked out my video on Lena Medina then I'll put the link in the description you can go check it out. So Lena Medina is said to be the youngest mother in the entire world and she probably started menstruating when she was only three to four years age. So my point over here is that for someone so young it is not an impossible case that they would not menstruate. It is absolutely and completely possible. So anyway ways for Christine it was one of those things that made her suspicious and really questioned Natalia's age. Now there were other observations as well. For instance the third month that is three months after her adoption by the Barnets they organized a play date for Natalia Grace with another girl who was the same age as Natalia and also had the very same rare condition of dwarfism. So they just thought, you know, it was it would be a good idea to make her interact with people who had special needs just as her and that way it would help her grow. So yeah, they organized this play date. Now the moment they saw these two girls together, Christine knew that in no way possible that Natalia and this other girl were of the same age. She could see that there was a huge age gap difference that Natalia looked much older as compared to the other eight-year-old girl with the same condition. You know, the size of the head and everything. She also would notice in the coming years that she never really grew, like her height never really grew. Even for a dwarf person, she never really got taller. Now, there were other peculiar observations that were made by Michael Barnett and his ex-wife Christine Barnett and that was that she never really wanted to play with toys or with kids around her age. She would always choose to be surrounded with older kids, you know, with older children people probably 15 years and above. Now because of all of these behaviors and the way she acted matured, they decided that it would be a good idea to go seek help from their family physician. Now before I go to that part of the case, I want to talk about something else that was bothering the Barnets in regard to Natalia Grace. Now apart from the age mystery of Natalia Grace, the other thing was that they felt that their life was in danger when they were around Natalia. Now, according to the father, it increased slowly. Like initially, she would do minor stuff and then the intensity of her dangerous acts increased simultaneously, like constantly. So initially, she would go on and she would put these thumb stacks facing upwards on the staircase. So anyone who was walking down or who was going up would accidentally step on it and you know what what can happen next like I don't really want to go into deep about it because it gives me goosebumps even thinking of a person stepping on it so anyways she would do that she even once tried to push her adoptive mother Christine onto an active electric fence now according to Christine she tried I mean I get it it is difficult to think that a dwarf someone who is just two or three feet tall could do that but she at least tried that is what Christine claims. Now, they even claim that she tried to poison them by putting bleach in their coffee. And then when Christine saw this happening and confronted her and asked her why she was doing this, she point blank looked at them and told them that she was trying to kill them. Now, that was really scary. She would also go around the house and she would hide knives under her bed and any other spot that she could find. They would wake up in the middle of night and they would see that she's standing right beside their beds and sometimes even with knives. Now the Barnets were not the only ones that she was targeting, like allegedly targeting. She was also targeting their three biological sons. Now one of their sons, the oldest son Jacob, he is genius. He's a physics genius. Uh, so from a very young age, he started going to college. He was enrolled in a university. And every time he would go to a university, the mother, Christine, would follow up with the other siblings, which also includes Natalia. Now, this one time, she somehow got her hands over all of the three boys' precious stuff, you know. Like for the youngest brother, it was his cow toy. He was really into cows, so she got his favorite cow toy. And for the oldest brother, she got his homework. And we all know for little kids, homeworks is their life, even if that kid is a genius. So what happened was that while they were crossing the road, there was this huge traffic. And in the middle of traffic, she just threw out all of their stuffs. So you can imagine that what could have happened next. 
Now the boys they immediately scattered around and they started taking in their stuffs and we all know that is the last safest thing to do in the middle of traffic. So she was trying to really hurt these boys. Now all of these things pointed towards her being someone who was much older and she was definitely not a person with good intention. So anyways they took her to a doctor, they even took her to a psychiatrist because according to the Barnets over a year after they adopted her they started noticing that her mental health was deteriorating. She would complain of hearing noises so that is why they decided that it would be a good thing to take her to a mental health specialist. Now that is when the mental mental health specialist, not just one but many actually suggested the Barnets, Michael and Christine to go get her bone density tested because that way they would be able to know her exact age or at least some estimate about her real age. Age. Even the psychiatrists and psychologists were suspecting that she was not really an 8 year old girl. So anyways, they got her bone density tested and the tests concluded that she was actually 22 years old. Now what happens is that in 2012, the Barnets filed a motion with the Marion County Superior Court in Florida where the judge actually changed the birth date on her birth certificate from 2003 to 1989. So yes, if I have to repeat myself, Natalia Graves was legally an adult. Now the reason in their defense, the Barnets claim that the prime reason behind them doing all of this was because they felt that she required special psychiatric attention and that was only possible if she would be adult. So they did it to provide proper treatment to her. Now, for almost a year, she was hospitalized in St. Vincent Indianapolis Stress Center. Now, over there, various mental health specialists, they claim that she confessed to them that she was not really 8 years old, but she was 18 or much older than that. And many staffs have admitted that in a lot of their conversations, she would go on explaining the way the plan she had made up on how to murder the entire Barnett's family on how to stab them to death and then roll them in a carpet and then put them in the backyard. So anyways, um, these things if we take under consideration then it definitely helps with the Barnett's case that she really was a dangerous con artist woman, adult, definitely there. So anyways, in August of 2012, when she was discharged from this medical institution, the Barnets decided to go out and rent an apartment for her so that she could live separately from them. Though this apartment was just like five minutes walking distance from their house, they got everything prepared for her. They helped her financially and materialistically. They gave her food stamps. They helped her with getting social security number, IDs and various paperwork so that she can get benefits from the government. Basically, in their defense, they say that they were doing exactly the same thing that they would do with their other kids, with their biological sons after they turn adults. Now, they even go ahead and say that when she was evicted from her previous house because she caused some issues. Now, we don't know what issue did she really cause or what problem did she create. I would really love to know the problem that she created in her first rental apartment because that way we would get a lot of insight of this case you know especially of Natalia's character and her personality so anyways we do not have that information so the Barnets helped her they did not wanted her to be homeless so they went ahead and rented another apartment and they again this time paid the entire year's rent they paid the lease and everything they helped her with the grocery they also hired a medical assistant who would help her and assist her with everyday stuff. They also enrolled her in an adult education center where she would get her GED and they were planning on getting her further education and cosmetology for which they were paying everything. They were paying her bills. Now meanwhile the Barnets were planning on leaving the country. They actually left America and they moved to Ontario, Canada. The reason was, remember that previously in the video I mentioned that their oldest son Jacob is a physics genius. Now when he was younger, when he was two years old, the Barnets were told that he had mild case of autism. But then when he was 12 years old, he actually got his first academic paper published. He was also featured in an episode of CBS 60 Minutes in 2000. 2012. 
Now, in 2013, Jacob got an offer from a university in uh, Waterloo, Ontario, Perimeter Institution for Theoretical Physics. Now, this was a big deal. This was a huge opportunity for Jacob and the parents, Christine and Michael, they just wanted to go ahead with this. So they decided to move to Canada, but they decided to leave Natalia behind. Now, according to them, in their defense, they claim that Natalia was 22, 23 year old woman. She was independent and legally she can live alone and everything. Now Christine claims that when she moved to Canada, the connection, the communication that they used to have on everyday basis with Natalia actually broke. Natalia stopped picking up their calls. In fact, the, one of the last times they ever communicated with her was through a letter that she received in her mail which said that she had changed Michael from the beneficiary of her social security income to someone else. Also, Christine suspected that during this time, she was actually going around pretending to be a child again, a little kid again, so that she could fool another innocent family. Now, this is when the entire case of Natalia Grace and the Barnets exploded in the media. The Barnets actually were charged on September of 11, 2019 on various counts of felony neglect of a dependent. Now, the police had an affidavit of a probable cause which stated that an expert at the Peyton Manning Children's Hospital named Dr. Riggs actually carried out a bone density test on Natalia in 2010 which actually concluded that she was eight years old then. Now they had another skeletal test report which was conducted by the very same institution in 2012 which concluded that she was 11 years old then. Now if we take these reports under consideration it would highly contradict the Barnett's claim that she was a 22 years old or 24 years old respectively woman. Now, according to the affidavit, Michael Barnett actually admitted to the police that he knew about these reports, which stated that she was still an eight years old or 10 years old in 2010 and 2012, respectively. He also knew that she was still a minor when he left her alone, when he and his ex-wife, Christine, left her alone, abandoned in a house when they were moving to Canada. Now, all of these allegations and accusations, the Barnets completely deny. According to their attorney, Michael never really admitted all of these things to the police. In fact, the communication and the only communication he had with the police was when he did not have an attorney who was representing him. So the police were actually twisting and turning his words to use it for their benefit or to use it for Natalia's benefit. They also claim that the affidavit was very selective and only cited certain medical records. So anyways, Christine and Michael Barnett, they both surrendered to the police separately. On September of 19th, Christine got out of bail of $5,500 and Michael got out of bail of $5,000. Now the biggest question over here is what exactly is the age of Natalia Gray? See, nobody knows about it, okay? Not I don't know about it. Even Dr. Phil doesn't know about this. There is this one woman from Ukraine. I guess her name is Anna. She claims to be Natalia's biological mother. She also goes on and telling the reason why she could not keep her with herself. She says that the birth date on the Ukrainian birth certificate is legit, that she was actually born in 2003 and she is not a 20 or 30 year old woman. Now, the thing is that this has not been confirmed. It hasn't been proven that she is really her biological mother for for some reason, I don't know why they couldn't do that. Anyways, Natalia Grace is currently living with the Mans family in Indiana. Antoine and Cynthia Mans, they are her guardians. They even tried to adopt her, but since she is legally an adult, that cannot be done. So anyways, the update about this case is that last year in 2020, the case was taken to the court where both were facing neglect charges separately and both of them had their six out of eight charges dismissed by the judge by the court. Now, according to the Tipicano Superior Court judge, the Barnets cannot face charges of neglect of a dependent because the American court on three different occasions, that is in 2012, 2013 and 2017, had educated and ruled out that Natalia Grace was actually a grown-up adult and not a minor. So if she was not a minor, then they cannot be actually charged with neglect of a dependent slash minor. Now, the remaining charges accuse them of neglecting a person with special needs. 
that is really a legit point if you ask me personally it doesn't matter if she's an 8 year old girl or a 22 year old woman they definitely neglected a person with special needs the apartment that she was put into was not set up for someone who had special needs or someone who was dwarf so that in my opinion definitely is a legit point but the bonnets claim that it would be easy for them to prove their innocence now the thing about this case is that there are two sides now this one side believes that natalia grace is innocent the other side believes that the barnets are innocent and that they are victims of a sociopathic con artist a woman who is or who could be a murderer now both of the sides have a lot of inconsistencies and things that do not add up like if you look at natalia grace over here it is said that before she was adopted by the barnets she was actually with 30 different families and that is weird like why did all of these families decided to give her away now she herself says that one of the families decided to give her away after the mom suspected that she was trying to hurt one of her sons so natalia says that she was actually really close with one of the boys and she was wrestling with him like playing and wrestling with him and she ended up on his arm wrong which made the mother think that natalia was trying to break her son's arm also there have been claims that she had previously tried to murder other families as well with whom she was see the thing is that a lot of information regarding to this case is confidential now this is a case of adoption so the court has kept all the files very confidential by the way back in 2011 and 12 the police were investigating and they were asking questions regarding so as to establish if there was any immigration fraud or not they were also suspecting false age reporting prior to natalia leaving ukraine now this case was referred by the police to the fbi and ice but i guess they did not really went ahead with the investigation i don't know there's no information about this so anyways there's definitely a lot of inconsistencies if you look at natalia being a young woman i mean she claims to remember a lot of things she would go around even mentioning the exact same bleach that she allegedly uh, put in the coffee of the barnets that the barnets claim that she was trying to poison she remembers a lot of things in detail so you know it is quite difficult for me to comprehend that someone so young like i can't remember what i was doing back when i was 6 or 8 so that's there also the fact that for almost a year and a half she was in the house all by herself there are so many things that i think a 7 or 8 year old little girl cannot do especially someone who has a dwarfism and scoliosis over that psychologically speaking a lot of times in cases where kids come out from orphanage or group homes they are quite developmentally delayed you know their mental age if she is chronologically speaking if she is 8 years old then her mental age possibly could be 6 7 So someone so young how did she survive in that house all by herself and like i mentioned previously that house was not even built for a person who has dwarfism but when we talk about the barnets there's definitely inconsistencies and things that do not add up i mean if they are lying then this is not the first time that a couple went ahead and adopted a kid and then later on decided that they do not wanted the kid anymore so they plotted some kind of a plan to give them away like i remember i think it happened before the pandemic that an american couple actually adopted a boy from ukraine or russia i don't remember exactly and after a couple of months uh, they decided that they did not wanted him so they bought him a plane ticket and sent him on a plane all by himself i don't know what exactly were they thinking so yeah what i'm trying to say is that it happens a lot unfortunately so anyways it's a very confusing case the barnets claim that not only once but three times the court have concluded and found her to be an adult so they definitely might be having some solid evidences regarding to that but then comes a lot of other factors you know there are this dwarf couple who claim that she's actually a 16 year old or a 19 year old now if you see in 2021 and there is a possibility that natalia herself does not know her exact age you know because she comes from a place that she does not have much of the idea also uh, for the barnets i remember this point that actually the barnets said in an interview that they had one of their friends who's 
actually Ukrainian who can speak the language they called this friend over so that this friend could speak with Natalia in her mother tongue and the shocking thing is that Natalia could not understand a single word that this person that this friend was saying also she did not have any accent which is quite shocking to imagine because a kid who has lived most of her life in a certain country does not know the language or does not even have an accent and her vocab was highly sophisticated you know highly developed even for someone of her age you know a seven year old boy or a girl whose native language is English even for them it was highly sophisticated so all of these things I don't know it just makes you question she is really a little girl if you ask me personally I don't know where exactly I stand I mean sometimes I feel like she's a little girl but then I'll be like mm, I don't know I mean I seriously don't know and I would love to know your opinion on this and yeah like I was saying in the first part of this video that there are definitely a lot of similarities between the movie Orphan and this and I would not give any spoilers for anyone who hasn't checked the movie out if you haven't done so check it out and also drop in your views do you think that she is 19 years old or do you think that she is 30 36 year old woman was a con artist and a sociopath and probably tried to murder the entire Barnard family. Tell me your opinions in the comment section. If you found this video informative, if you want me to continue making such videos, then do hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, share this video and most importantly, take care of yourself. Be happy, stay positive and spread positivity. Take care. Bye-bye.